Welcome into a new episode of the Bengals Beat Podcast. I'm Kelsey Conway here with my co-host, Mike Hilton. Up, and we have up? a very special guest in studio continuing on with our interviews. This time we decided to not have a Mike interview a player, but one of our favorite people in the Bengals Bengals building. And yeah, Cam Taylor Britt kind of like gave him a new name. You could call him defensive coordinator, Lou Anarumo. You could go, um, what was the nickname Vaughn gave you that mad scientist and and Cam Taylor Britt, I believe called you a Houdini. (laughs) So (laughs) any of those three, we can call you, but we're very excited to have Lou Anarumo in studio today. And uh, I guess we'll just start with, what do you think of our setup here? Oh, I love it. This is great. <laughs> um, I'm blown away by the by your view of, what, view. of the stadium, the, but this building's great, and then this is awesome. You guys, together, it's great. How much have you seen <clears throat> players in the media, How the number, I feel like, of players getting into media careers after they're done playing has got to be way more now compared to when you first started coaching in yeah, NFL, right? Yeah, it's huge. Uh, matter of fact, Got home last night and I'm watching uh, turned on NFL Network real quick and there's there's and Sue, mm-hmm. you know he's doing like a, a guest star or whatever guest right. uh, host for mm-hmm. the week and uh, you know I think just a great transition so um, you know it's, it's nice to sit there and talk about it and then you know you get critiqued by somebody I guess but <laughs> at least it's not by the world That's yeah sure. well so the whole idea here was is obviously and you know being around Mike he's just such a personable charismatic right. person and I know in just small talks with him he had said I want to get into media when he's done playing so I was like well why don't we team up and do an off-season podcast together and just kind of see how you like it and more people will be willing to come on if he's sitting <laughs> next to me than me so it works out for both of us A- absolutely yeah Mike's <laughs> great as you know as we all know great personality and this this next Part of his life will be great for him. I, I believe that. Appreciate it, Lou. But <laughs> you have him for for some time. We're not well, talking not about yeah. no, 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 no. This yeah. is this is uh, this is his. Uh, you know, he's spring training. Whatever. He's just getting exactly. Up <laughs> I actually um, just read an article about <clears throat> Jason Kelsey. Just did the NFL Network broadcast boot camp, really? and he went out to LA, and mm. it's like a three day boot camp where they put you on screen and they record you, and that's when they give you like feedback for when you want to get into that part of your career. And I mean, take it from someone who was, I mean, I don't remember, was Jason Kelsey what he is now when he came in? Like, did everybody think he was going to be that good of a center? He made a whole career for himself post playing as a center because of his media stuff. Yeah. uh, You know, he's always been a good player. And my son was just showing me the other day at the house, or maybe it was my daughter, I forget, uh, their podcast mm-hmm. that they mm-hmm. do. The, yeah. two, the, brothers. the two brothers. We're coming mm-hmm. for it, Mike. <laughs> yeah. it was, and I was, la- I mean, I yeah. was, la- the, the one they did about the head coaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the picture. The, yeah. 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 Was, so uh, funny. Yeah. It, was, it was some good comedy there. Yeah, That's when Zach like, didn't even, uh, yeah. Travis Kelsey didn't yeah, even know who Zach Taylor was did. in the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Mike on that one. Yeah. No, it's a great podcast. Um, shout out to those former UC Bearcats. Some reason I just think it's a smooth transition for NFL athletes to the media because we're involved with them so much throughout our career, and we make connections. And you know, you just kind of kind of find the right the right niche for you, whether it's on TV, behind the mic, on the podcast. It's just you know, guys find find what works for. Why do you guys think that there's a perception at first for some that being yourself in the media isn't worth it for you i don't know because i feel like there's some players like you who are you know and ted karras and a lot of guys on the locker room um are so willing to talk to the media and do things and and you see it really help them but then there's also some that are just i'd rather not you know just some people that really don't want to be involved with the media you know um obviously they might be introverts or whatever but you know it's just so some media is good media and some media is bad media and some players want to uh, stay away from it, but others want to get involved. So it's just the the, the nature of their person. You have any yeah, thoughts? No, I agree a hundred percent. They just, it's every, each individual's personality. Some are more comfortable sitting behind here and others, you know, like, you know, get me away mm-hmm. from it. And, <laughs> and natural, 
you know, us as humans are going to get away from the things you don't like. And yep. so the guys just shy away from it. I think if they're not truly comfortable in front of the camera or behind the microphone. Yeah. I don't know. I always just thought like, <clears throat> especially with social media taking off in the way that it has, like obviously more players are understanding of it when they come in, mm -hmm. but I just always wondered why, mm -hmm. like has someone gotten at just a bad experience? that's kind of like plagued the players. I just wanted to get your feedback mm -hmm. on it, but yeah, some people, I guess. Think, think, just, think of Mar Marshawn Lynch. I'm pretty sure during his interviews, he, he just didn't want to be here because he'll get fined. So it's like, he's just one of the guys that really didn't want to be involved with the media, which is yeah. probably who he is as a person. Well, for the most part, I mean, your locker room is, <laughs> most of the players are willing and want yeah. to do the media. So we don't have that issue. But um, when you're looking at players in free agency or in the draft, are you able, like, did you know Mike was going to be the kind of media star he's going to be like, is that something you can tell in his personality? Um, I don't think that's on the checklist of things to say, Hey, you know, this guy's going to really be good for us in the media. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but when you no. were first meeting him with his yeah, personality, of course. can you yeah, tell? Yeah, you can tell, you know, right away <laughs> who the guys that are a little bit more bubbly personalities and you know, a little more outgoing for sure. You know, and mm -hmm. we had a great – there was me, you, mm -hmm. Cheeto – Trey, uh, Trey. Uh, um, there was a couple offensive guys too, uh -huh. but, but at yeah, our table it was yeah, S3. that was our table, and kind of talked about it was almost. Oh, that, is this the free agency yeah, dinner? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah tell the me about infamous that infamous free agency dinner. But <laughs> to me, that was like um, we were at uh, Jeff. Jeff we were at the precinct yep. and uh, upstairs, and um, maybe they'll pot. Maybe they'll sponsor the podcast, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, Mr. Mr. Rubio does a great job uh, taking care of all of us, but. Um, uh, he, uh, that, that dinner was to me, I mean, I coached in college a long time and it was like a recruiting dinner. Mm -hmm. Um, and not that we were recruiting them, but we was more kind of selling them on what my vision on defense, Zach's vision as the team. Hey, here's what we're trying to do. We had some momentum coming out of the 2000, uh, the, the, uh, 20 season, mm -hmm. you know, we had won some games and made some inroads there. I think, I still think if Joe doesn't get hurt that year, we probably win. I don't know, six, seven, eight games maybe. Hmm. Um, so we were on the right trajectory. And then when we started adding players like Mike and Trey and Cheeto and, and the Vaughn, you know, the year before and, um, you know, and the guys we added on offense. So that was one of those, I'll tell that story forever. Like it started kind of here, yeah. you know. And um, I know those guys got a great feel for it too. So mm -hmm. we were what, um go Go back to the, my coming across your desk. Was it – you sat in a free agency meeting and you had just gotten on your first season. So how did you, I guess, set up that list of, cause you had a lot of positions you wanted to mm -hmm. revamp per se. How'd you start with your list and how did Mike end up here? Well, I mean, good, good yeah, really kind of easy for me because, you know, we obviously played Pittsburgh twice a year. So we watched, we're following them a lot, so we're always watching their defense because they're playing the same team. So, you know, he sticks out like a sore thumb, obviously. Um, and so we all had a great – or I had a great idea of what Mike was able to do. And when it when it, when it it did come up, and, um, you know, I'm good friends with his agent mm -hmm. uh, as well, and our, our people did a great job of, um, you know, making it happen. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. That was an easy one. Yes, I said fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't to, I didn't have to watch the tape because I already watched the tape. So, Got it. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite Mike Hilton story? Mm. Do you have any untold stories? Um, Do we? I don't know. There's a lot. Um, I just think that the best thing for me um, as a coach is uh, and just a guy is uh, every day in the locker room, every day in our meeting room, um, is what is the joy for me. You know, I was just telling somebody the other day on the phone, I'm like, the players are here. It's like, it just makes the day go faster. Yeah. It makes yeah. the day is better. Because we interact and, and the way we are here um, is different than a lot of teams, you know, just as tight as we are as a group. Um, these guys know, like I tell them all the time, like when we're in our, we're just getting these rookies kind of, and these new guys kind of mm -hmm. adjusted to how we do things. Um, I tell them, hey, this is our this is our living room. You know, and we're going to air our differences out yep. in this meeting room because every family has their issues at certain points of the year, blah, blah, blah. And those are the things that make what we do great. And I'll lean on him, 
you know, hey, what's, what do you think about this? Uh, maybe a situation where we're dealing with a player, maybe didn't do something right, and he'll come and give me his truthful opinion. Um, and I won't necessarily listen to all the players' opinions, <laughs> but the ones I trust, which is most of our team, um, and guys like Mike, you know, that that to me. So there's not one story I'd say. It's the sideline banter. Yeah, uh, that's, that's always. That's every Sunday. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's all of it. You know, it's all of it. What on the field, though, if you had to pick one play, I know he's – scratching the surface, hopefully, of what he's going to do in Cincinnati. What's the one play when, if someone were to explain, like, ask you, tell me about Mike Hilton. Like, what's the first yeah. play that pops so in your we, head? Uh, I just showed it the other day to the team. So, I mean, there's a, there's a ton of plays, but the one, um, let's go ten, two. I'll give you two. Both Tennessee, one playoff game last year um, mm. or two years, two years ago, ago. whatever mm-hmm. it is, right? Um, we blitz, tips it, catches it. The only thing I was mad at him is he didn't score. I was tired. By. He got he was tired. I was tired. <laughs> Ryan, I think Ryan got it. He did. He did. Um, Ryan's fast though, so I'll give you that. <laughs> Extra seed. Um, and then this year at Tennessee, we have you know we like to blitz him obviously, and he was doing a good job as he always does disguising it. But the quarterback saw him and said, you know, hey, watch twenty one's coming. Mm-hmm. coming. Said it. Mm-hmm. Mike blitzed and TFL Derrick Henry in the backfield for a three yard loss. So I that. they knew he was coming. Still got the job done. You know, he's – and you can so, – you know, the Buffalo game, how we harassed the quarterback and all that he does. So all that stuff makes Mike Mike. So is there – with the way that he uses you, if you're looking at your stat sheet and you see how many sacks you had in Pittsburgh compared to here, you could say that your sack numbers are down a little bit. Yeah. but. It, that's not because, like he's saying, he, you're disguising the blitz. Like he blitzes you a lot. Yeah, that's not an indictment of how how often you're getting. It, it's kind your of just blitz, like right how how my career is going. Like you make more plays, teams are going to recognize you. Te- teams are going to uh, prepare for you. And obviously, you know, all my success that I had in Pittsburgh blitzing and coming here and having that success. You know, teams are going to be aware of where 21 is and. And Lou understand that he he knows the right times to to let me go be a playmaker. He he knows even if I'm not blitzing, just me showing is going to have that offense so worried where somebody else can get a one on one matchup and they can go in and make the play. So it's it's just like you know I I know where I am in this league and I know how teams respect me. So whether I'm making the play or not, it doesn't bother me. What is having a player with Mike's skill set? allow you to do and do you feel like he revitalized the nickel position a little bit yeah for us for sure um you know i just think as he just mentioned he sets not only does he do a great job when he's asked to be at the point of attack and make plays you know part of what you're talking about with the um some of the sacks because he's around the quarterback all the time when he blitzes but we're calling a lot of those run they'll run blitzes sometimes Mm -hmm. and we're calling them on run right downs now. and they happen to run the ball <laughs> so he's a, got a bunch of tfls that way too so it's not necessarily you know maybe the numbers are down i don't look at that stuff but um the impact is still there. Is, is huge <laughs> and like he said you know he's, the protection is going to go his way because they know he's coming you mm-hmm. know um but uh yeah I, I just think he sets other guys up too so think buffalo um we he shows off the edge the Quarterback checks the protection to him, Vaughn and Vaughn comes free. free and gets a sack. First, Just, first drive of yeah, the series. Yep, and it was like, there it is. There's Mike in a nutshell. Got it. Huh. Uh, I'll have to go back and watch that you now. You, check that that you can Fun. recite it off the top of your head. Yeah. Um, okay, well, we well, remember these things like moms remember like my baby's first oh. step. Exactly. You, give me, you give me a play, I'll tell you. Two thousand. I said something this morning about Mike Thomas in 2013. 13. I remember like it was yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So a uh, question that I, I wanted to ask you, and I'm, I asked him a little bit, but <clears throat> what made you decide you wanted to be a coach? Uh, well, you, every time you stop playing, you know, you always want to be around it. And, um, I remember standing at, it's a long time ago now, I was standing <laughs> at a jet practice and, um, Bill Parcells was the head coach and, um, he was talking to all of the visiting kind of coaches. I just started, I was at the Merchant Marine Academy or something, division three school. And he goes, Hey, beats, beats nine to five all day, every day. 
you know, just yeah. you're out here coaching, you're enjoying it. And, you know, my dad was a high school basketball. My, my dad was a, a really good, um, played division one basketball mm-hmm. um, and uh, coached high school basketball. So it was kind of always in me. He was a teacher, principal. So I always thought I'd be a, I don't know, I thought I'd be a high school teacher and a high school football coach, mm-hmm. you know, growing up. I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then I was like, yeah, I, I think I can do maybe a little bit better than this. So, and, um, just kept going. So. Well, but it's one thing to say that, but then, I mean, think of how many people are you that don't end up a defensive coordinator and hopefully soon to be a head coach. <laughs> hopefully, uh, not. maybe not hopefully. So <laughs> <laughs> how did you, where do you feel like you really made your mark as a coach to transition to the NFL side of things um i think it was all those years i was coaching in college i would always come and visit guys that i knew in the league so to always kind of stay up with hey what what's the difference between what we're doing in college and what's happening in the nfl and so when i got my first opportunity at the dolphins um you know it was like okay i already know what's going on now it's just a matter of how are the players going to react to you know the coaching style and who was the head coach that hired you uh joe philbin Joe with the Dolphins, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, and so, you know, once you realize it's just fo- it's just football all over all over again. It's not these guys aren't. It's you know you have this vision of what it might be, but it's football. It's and football, they, right? as long as these guys, I've always said it to younger coaches, as long as the players know that what you're telling them is going to help them get better and make them a better player, they'll listen to you all day every day. If you if you're not truthful, if you're there's some gray to what you're saying. They'll 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 see that mm-hmm. out in a minute, mm-hmm. and they and that's some of the coaches that have trouble. So be direct, be demanding, and know what you're talking about, and you'll have a pretty good career. And that's that's him in a nutshell. You know, that's <laughs> how he is as a coach. He's gonna tell us exactly how he wants it done, and we we know he's gonna put us in the right position to make the play. We just have to make it, and that, that's kind of that, that's the that's the trust that we have in Lou and the the trust he has in sure, us. No so. I asked Cam, did he have like a welcome to the NFL moment? And you reciting things you say to Cam Taylor it might be like favorite part of my press, the press conferences. It's just so funny when he's just like, don't do, don't ever do that again. But did you ever have a moment where when you're saying, you know, you have to be direct that you almost came off as like too much Johnny tough coach and and it didn't go well for you? Um, Yeah, I think earlier in my career, I would say that. I have way more of a filter and knowing when to <laughs> push buttons and knowing when not to. And that just comes with experience. Yeah. I think all of us as players, as coaches, you know, you just learn. You learn. Um, and it's not always the, you know, the hammer always, you know, uh, because some guys just can't take it yeah, all the time. Exactly. And to me, it's always been get after him, but then I'll go give him a hug and let him know, hey, I'm doing this because – you're not, you're not going to have any chance to do it right if you keep doing it the way you were doing it. Mm-hmm. So just listen to what I'm telling you, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah, you definitely have to, uh, you know, kind of yeah. change up your approach sometimes. Mm-hmm. Do you have a, a moment that sticks out to you about how you're saying he's just direct, but you've seen people really resonate with his messaging well that comes to mind? Um, Not really all off the top. It's just – even if we're having a bad half, especially as the secondary, like he he's really involved with the secondary, mm-hmm. and we say we give up an explosive play, you know he he might snap, but he's like, all right, guys, let's just settle down, let's play our game, you know, uh, make our right calls, make our right checks, and just make plays. And when your coach is not, it, it, it is it, when your coach is in your ear like that, and it gives you that positivity. Like yeah. you said, it's it's all about how you how how you direct your players you know what I mean hammer or just an easy push to the side you know Lou he, he knows how to balance everybody so I feel like I have to ask I mean you're becoming like famous for your oh, game plans and how mastermind. multiple they <laughs> are and I feel like that's become the new <laughs> shtick for yeah. people when they talk about <laughs> you do you just like in the off season like how do you come up with that many different ways to attack an offense like i mean the foot like you're saying football's not hard right mm-hmm. like it's been played for a very long time so there's only so many different things you can do on the defensive side of the ball yep. so how do you feel like you're able to come up with these game plans that work at the right time that 
haven't been seen by multiple people. Like, I just find that fascinating that you seem to have so many different game plans, but it's like, well, how has somebody else not been doing that before? (laughs) I mean, I think there, I mean, there's been plenty, there's plenty of good uh, coaches out there, obviously. Um, But I think for us, when it comes down to it is we've been together now for a while. Mm -hmm. And so I can, we can talk at halftime and say, Hey, listen, this ain't working. Remember when we did this? Like might, I, not, no, 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 might not practice throughout the week. We yeah, do. we're doing it. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, yeah, okay. You know, like we had a simple little adjustment during, <laughs> during the Cleveland game where we changed a blitz pattern because it wasn't working. So I'm like, hey, just when we see this, do this. And they're like, okay. You know, um, and then we can just kind of play off of – I mean, we have our stuff that we do, mm-hmm. and we're going to do it because mm-hmm. we do it well. Um and then we just have little things off of it that may look the same, but but it's different, yep. you know. Mm-hmm. And that to me, especially with the quarterbacks we have to face, yeah, you know, we've got to keep those guys off balance, yeah. and um, that's that's a big part of my job is Sundays, really trying to get that guy to be uncomfortable mm-hmm. and not okay. I know what's coming because it's like baseball. If they know the fastball is coming, they're going to hit it, you know, into the second second stand, second row, you know. So. <laughs> Just trying to keep them off balance. I shouldn't know if you have like a book that you just hit in the summer that's just like all these different defensive packages and like one week you're like, oh, here's my binder of all the surprised. ones that I like. You're, you're a bag <laughs> yeah, have, of tricks per have, se. <laughs> we have some stuff that we're working on for sure. We did a little something today yep, actually. Yep. Um, but uh, again, it's it's more of right who we who we playing, what do they present, what are the issues they're presenting, mm-hmm. and how do we stop those major issues? You yep. know, mm-hmm. you know we we have a saying. It's like you know we, you know we got to nail the things we know they're going to do. Whatever they they're good at, we got to stop that. Yep. And then whatever else they do different, we have rules that will handle all of it. So, you know, it should never be like Mike said. You know, like it should never be anybody running free in the, in the secondary. Like, you know, things are going to happen. It's the NFL. You know, people score points these days. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, we, we should be close to guys. And um, when we're not, that's when I get that's a the little problem. agitated. <laughs> how do you feel? How long do you feel like it takes you to get to know the type of player you're coaching when you're saying he can handle harsh criticism versus I might need to be a little bit more gentle. Like how long does that take you to figure out? Yeah, pretty quick for me. You know, you can see whether it's, you know, body movements or reaction um, or just facial reactions Mm -hmm. or how did they handle that, you know, or did they just, you know, take it, you know? And again, I think you just get, get a feel for that uh, as each guy's so different, you know? So some guys can, some guys can. (laughs) Did you ever think, do you ever think about wanting to go into coaching? I have, um, you know, there might be something I do down the line. Yeah, he's coming with me. <laughs> yeah. 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 I gladly take that if you want me to take him with Not him. yet. Not yet. But, you know, obviously I still want to be around the game, and I know how much the, the coaches put into, put into you know, preparation for the players is and game plan. Is that the main reason why you wouldn't is the hours? I think so. Just because I did it so much as a player, you know, I definitely want to take some time away but stay involved in it. Maybe so. Coaching is up in the air right now, so we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Well, so that's such a common <laughs> thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like people talk about how much coaches work during the season. They work way more than us, and that's what they, that's what people don't understand. Can you like break it down a week schedule for yeah. our listeners who sure. don't know how much time coaches actually spend yeah. getting ready for the game, mm-hmm. etc.? What's your week like? I mean, so I used to tell when my kids were younger, I would tell them when the season started, I'd say, I'll see you in the spring. You know, and I was kidding, but I wasn't, you know, and I tell them, hey, we're going to spend more time together than we are with our own family. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why our place is such a pleasure. You know, every day is like I I walk by the lockers. I'm like, that's a good guy. Good guy. Good guy. You know, there's we don't have that other issue in our building. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we play the game on Sunday, um, you know, uh, if What's your a, like? I heard Zach Taylor mm-hmm. likes the Brussels sprout salad from Eno. He picks that up. I like that after <laughs> games. I I think I read that yeah. somewhere yeah. Uh, before the Super Bowl. What is kind of like your post game yeah, Cincinnati my wife's pasta thing? Meatballs. She's if she's in town, which she always is during the season. It's she's cooking. 
or I bet she has a, a, a sauce recipe that I would love to have, but <laughs> I does. definitely couldn't Listen, make on my own. No, no, no. It's very simple. Okay, believe as long it or as not. it's simple, like dummy simple, proof in the kitchen. The yes, she, <laughs> she got it from her father. My mother's very similar. So, uh, but yeah, so I'm eating pasta, meatballs, whatever she's making. I'm <laughs> destroying when How I How does she do that? Because if she's at the game. It's that's how fast it oh. is. So either it's I really do need this recipe now. Yeah. <laughs> so she'll do some stuff before we go, and then well, they're usually tailgating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or at one of those. I really want to go sometime. Yeah. I've heard yeah, it's me a blast. Too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Um, so Mondays we'll get in early. We'll um, we'll watch the tape uh, from the game if we're traveling. <laughs> Um, we'll watch it on the plane on mm-hmm. our iPads. So if we're home, I just wait till the morning and just watch it. And then we meet with the, the coaches. We meet, um, we have all kinds of meetings before the players ever get there to yeah. kind of say, Hey, here's what happened in the game. Here's what went good. Here's what went wrong. Get the statistical stuff. Um, and then move on to the players come in and then they'll watch, well, coaches will watch it with them. I'll show them, Hey, here's our goals. We didn't hit this. We got to yep. do this better, that better. Then the coaches will show them the, the tape. As uh, the DC, do you kind of pop into every position room? Sometimes. Or? Yeah. Sometimes. I, um, I mean, I trust our coaches. We got great, great coaches. So I'm usually using that time to prep for something else. I'm, I like getting on the next opponent quick. So while they're showing these guys a tape, I'm already working on something for the next opponent. So um, I would say Monday, it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are the longest nights. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also believe, you know, in I want to be like on top of it. I want to be quick and to the point, but not sacrificing any of the preparation. So yep. like our, our, I know this, our guys aren't forced to stay all these late hours if they don't need to we'll break a defensive meeting let's just say at 8 30 at night mm-hmm. and then the, if whatever individual work they have to do they can go do so they can get home in a reasonable hour because if we're exhausted then we're going to have no juice for the guys in mm-hmm. the morning and yeah. to me that's so important so you know we're in there, everybody's in there early um you know the 14 15 whatever hours it is whatever it's part of it monday tuesday uh, monday tuesday wednesday thursday we we're we try to like we're going to get off the field we're going to watch the tape and hopefully everybody's home by six so seven you watch o'clock. thursday night football i definitely yep. i want everybody out you know and so you can decompress a little bit fridays are great fridays because in and out yeah. every, fridays are great for yeah, me too <laughs> players, are, <laughs> players are done by noon yeah. Yeah. you know i'll stay mo- most of the coaches i'll that's my day where i'll sit and redo the red zone i don't even tell mike I, I redo the third down red zone on my own i just sit in my office turn the radio on and kind of go through some situations on my own and i have my call sheet so i'll make little notes on my own um and i'll be home by three four o'clock and then Saturday, if we're home, it's all day, pretty much. It's all day, <laughs> home. So we get a break at the end of the week to kind of yeah. build ourselves back up. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the early days are long. Do you feel like COVID has kind of changed the long theory that I feel like coaches had this thing that they had to defend their desks and you got to be here. Mm-hmm. If you leave any earlier than 10 on a Monday or Tuesday, that's like forbidden. Like did COVID change any of that with the ability to do Zoom or just no. kind of teaching the mindset of some from the Stone Age that you you can't do your work at home and still yeah. be very productive? I mean, I think we've all become more comfortable if we're not – like if something pops up, you know. I remember like I don't think I've ever not come to work, ever. Like, I've been coaching a long time. Right. I don't think I've had a sick day. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Good for you. So, like, I'm during the season, mm-hmm. right? Let's talk, you know, like, nobody's missing work. Oh, no, no you've, no. you've been sick because you've had times in your press conference yeah. where you make it known. Yeah. Please. Yeah, stay away. away. I'm trying to help you yeah, guys. Yeah, step away. But, but now, you don't feel like if it's a spring thing, something pops up, we all have stuff going on. Like, if we had to Zoom something, we're all comfortable yeah. with it now, mm-hmm. whereas... Like, well, you said Zoom to me, you know, before the COVID. No, I don't even know what you're talking right. about. So maybe that part of it. But no, nah, I, I just think we do what we do. And, um, you know, we just keep being uh, on point and it's working. What is the most gratifying part of being a coach at the level that you are? Um, again, I think working at the highest level of a profession, um, working with the with the players that are at their peak of their of their sport, uh, the best in the world, 
Um, I like that. I like that challenge of dealing with the elite, the best people. I don't mean that in a, you know, mm-hmm. whatever way. It's just they're the best players in the world. Uh, and you're dealing with the best coaches. You're going against the best coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a challenge. I think we're all competitive people growing up yep. in all the sports that we did or whatever it was. You know, you're always trying to win. Um, and so I, that's a big part of it. What questions do you have for him? I'll let you hit the mic for a little <laughs> bit. That's all right. All right. A lot, yeah. <laughs> you kind of. Took a took a lot of them, but uh, you just you know, tell us about the rookies. How, how you feel about the rookies mm-hmm. coming in? Yeah. You know, our first three were uh, all defensive guys, um, all big schools, all playmakers. Uh, so, how, how do you feel about them guys? I mean, as you know, we haven't done too much, right. but I do like what I see so far. You know, uh, Miles is coming up. You know, Hobbs drills that he's doing explosive. He's explosive. Big, he can get long, around the edge. Yeah. You know, he's got length. You know, you know how it is with the D line. We'll see when the pads come on. Yeah, for but sure. <laughs> he's shown that he'll do that in college. So, um, uh, and then DJ and and um, and um, oh my God, jo- Jordan. Uh, Jordan Battle, uh, <laughs> both have impressed out there. So, I, I'm so far so good. Knock on wood. There, I think we've done a good job. And and even uh, DJ Ivy, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the late round pick has shown that he can move around in, yep. in, in your guys' drills and stuff. So, you know, this is a hard time of the year because it's just shorts and T-shirts. Mm-hmm. And really get there's going to be guys I learned a long time oh, ago. Yeah. You're going to fall in love with some guys. Training camp all-star. And, Doesn't even make the team. Yeah. <laughs> and you just don't know until they got to tackle somebody. Right. And, mm-hmm. You know, but right now things are looking good. I was going to ask, since you're talking about the rookies, yeah. um, how nice is it? And I know you don't listen too much to what is said outside, but of course, when you think about the Bengals outside, the first thing is the offense, right? Just yeah. because they're the stars on the Bengals mm-hmm. are on offense. Not saying that you're not a star, no, but no, no. the general. You see who on the side on the uh, stadium. <laughs> <Yeah. those guys. laughs> so, of course, uh, most of the attention comes on offense, but back to back years now, draft has been heavily focused on the defense like how nice is it for you in a you're you know like the offense is what people are all jazzed up about but inside the building that's they don't get caught up on offense 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 that they still view defense as something that is still really important yeah thank god (laughs) (laughs) you know we we know we've got some uh we got we're pretty good quarterback check uh two uh, three wideouts check you know um so we we picked up orlando brown in Mm -hmm. free agency so i just think uh duke and our organization has done a great job of like one the one year we went with these guys and did all the free agency on defense we're a little bit heavier on offense so i think we've played well off that and um you know, it's just a way you got to – we do a great job of building the roster, and uh, I think that's a big part of it. Well, what were you I'm about to say, I feel like uh, they're, they're building the roster the right way. Obviously, we, like you said, we got the monsters on offense, but then the whole front office and those coaches are finding the right guys defensively to – we might not have the star power, but you can ask, you can ask some of the guys on the offense, like we feel like we're the heartbeat of the team. They get all the pub awesome. and everything, but – the defense, we feel like we we carry this team, and you know uh, it's, it's just who we are as a defense, and we take pride in it. Yeah, for sure. Tell us about the head coaching process the last couple mm. of years. <laughs> you enjoy it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a different it's a different deal. Um, I will say this year there was no like. You know, we lose a really, really tough game in Kansas City, mm-hmm. um, you know, which it's just it's over. Right. So it just goes from we're running for six months and then all of a sudden it's done. So I'm sitting on the bus trying to I'm starving. I was cold. All of that pissed <laughs> off the whole yeah. nine yards. <laughs> and um, and then I get a call from my agent mm-hmm. saying, hey, you know, this is going to happen here in two days or whatever it was. And I was like. Oh, okay, great. You know, so I was excited, but by the same token, you know, Uh, worn out, mm. you know, Um, but, but it was great. You know, each of the last two years had a chance and, um, you know, um, we'll see. It's so crazy how fast, I mean, going back to your, before your first season here as the DC, what was that jump like for you to go from being a position coach Mm -hmm. to a defensive coordinator at the NFL level? And now Four years later, you're going from defensive coordinator to 
hopefully a head coach someday. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like life's come at you yes, fast, right. quick yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think I always, again, you guys know me, I'm not this big ego guy or anything, but I've always kind of viewed myself as always seeing the big picture mm-hmm. when I was a DB coach because you have to, yep. you know, so – okay, I would maybe do this different or that different if I was a coordinator. And um, so I kind of had a vision of what I wanted to do. So, um, and then doing the same thing now, you know, Zach and I talk every day about certain things and, hey, you know, how are you thinking about handling this situation, that situation? Um, and then, you know, really just not to me, it's you got to hire good coaches, um, which we have done here, as you see all of our guys getting Get interviewed. interviewed yeah. um, and you, you you don't micromanage those guys. You let you hire them to do a job. You got to let them coach. And to me, that's a big part of it as a head coach too. You hire the right guys, um, and then you know you you let them do their jobs. And, um, and and it's the nature of our beast now. If they're not doing their jobs, they, they're, go. They're, we're all <laughs> we're all you know g- could get cut one day. Yeah. So that's just inevitable. It's just how it is. But. Um, you know, I think that that's a big part of it. And he knows selfishly. We've had some conversations during this whole process. Selfishly, I don't want him to go, but <laughs> obviously, it's, it's a better opportunity for him. And you know, uh, like I said, hopefully he'll be here uh, yeah. for the next couple of years. But that's a good thing about our coaching staff. Like over our, our success over these last two years, usually a lot of uh, coaches get plucked off the team, those teams, and go somewhere else. But we've been able to keep uh, this core together for a long time, and you know, that's that, that shows just great stability around this organization. Before we let you go, I want to ask you some non-football sure. Cincinnati questions. What are some of your favorite restaurants in Cincinnati? I've got a good one right underneath my building. Um, Rosie's Cocktails and Pies, good pizza, good Rosie's pasta. Cocktails. Anthony over there that runs that place, it's pretty, pretty good. Okay. I like that place a lot. It's my go-to because it's right down in my building, but it's really good. So, okay. uh, obviously, Ruby's. Um, it's my, when my wife's not in town, I'm not cooking, that's so what, I'm, walking, <laughs> I'm walking somewhere, and I can walk to Ruby's, and they, again, great, great food over there, too. So those would be my two uh, two top go-tos, I would say. What about you? What are your favorite restaurants? Oh, and Eno. Wait, sorry. Oh. Eno, number three. The do you get the Brussels sprout salad? I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> not as much as Zach. Obviously said the precinct. That's one. And if you don't know about Swamp Water Grill, it's over in Kentucky. If you like char grill oysters, some type of seafood, mm. Swamp Water Grill is is low key, but it's one of those you have you must have. Okay, shout out to Swamp. It's good Water. to know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you told me because I didn't know because I love all that. They got what you need at Swamp Water. Okay. Is. Well, what do you like to do in the off season when you're not coaching football? Um, so we will spend a lot of time. My sons like to play golf, so we'll golf. Um, just hang. How's your game? Yeah, you know, I'm all right. I'm good enough. Who's the best golfer, whether it be coach or player? I know it's a lot of us that that golf, but yeah, I don't know. Who I don't know who would yeah. be the number one. Yeah, I know Duke's pretty good. Um, on the on the on the uh, personnel side, I'm not sure to be honest. So we've only done a f- handful of uh, coaching golfing thing you know, everybody's about the same i, think. I um, everybody's asked pretty good. joe burrow last year if he would ever do the you know the the match the mm. whole uh, like last year it was tom brady and aaron versus young, uh, pat uh-huh. and yeah. josh and i asked him i was like you know would you ever do that and he basically said like i'm not good enough at golf to go out there and look like a fool no matter how much they're paying me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that that was pretty interesting that's because yeah. mike said he's a beast on the Ping, oh, ping pong, pong table, table. Man, so I, I'm kind of shocked that he's not thing. good at golf yeah. too. Everybody's good on ping pong in our locker room for some reason. Yeah, that's that's. that's <laughs> you ever get on the table? No, no I see <laughs> them play. I'm it's good. a little little hectic. I'm good. I'm just right here. These guys are diving on the floor. Yeah, they're, they're, they're athletic, fresh okay. out the practice, yeah. already sweating. They gonna take your stuff yeah. off, go right on the table, start sweating again. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's good competition. It, it gets their it gets their blood flowing. Um, so you like to golf? What else? Beach, love the beach, um, hanging out. You're into watching fighting, boxing. You like might have boxing. said it wrong. Yeah, I do like which yeah. which one? No, I like boxing. UFC is now, yeah, but I, like, I know yeah, I, boxing. I'm okay in the UFC, but I, I'm always been an old school boxing guy. I love boxing. So, matter of fact, you, Ali, you always show yeah, us Ali some was on last film. night. I was mm-hmm. watching Ali with Will Smith. You know, just because mm, just one of those great. classics. Yeah, it's a classic. But I just love. I love those guys. Are you talk about mentally tough? Oh my god! You and know, he's showing us. A bunch of just old boxing clips from different different uh, boxers and just how they would withstand, you know, yeah. haymakers and how they bounce back at the end of the round to still win. So I just, you know, little things like, you know, 
when you don't think you got enough, when you when you think you're done on the field, it's always a little more. There's always a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, or (laughs) Vander Holyfield, or one of those guys that, and they, and and I'll show it to them. You know, it's just like you got a little more. Just go ahead and do it every Saturday meeting. Yeah, every Saturday meeting. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you so much yes, taking Sarah. some time to come in and join awesome. us. We could talk to you for another Sarah. hour, but we know you have lots to do. So Get thanks so much yeah. for joining us. And for sure. we will be on next week. Who's Look the forward guest? to talking to you we guys gotta, then. We, gotta find the next the guest? One. we don't know yet. We got to find we're, the next uh, one. We have an idea. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs>